We are in Bibles, the book of Acts, chapter 27. Look, folks, I can't tell you enough. If you miss a sermon, we'll have it for you on YouTube. Everybody hear that? And please share those sermons. They are a blessing to people. Um, uh, we want to really, uh, I, I mean, God's really blessed us with the ability to put out these messages. So if you are on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. That helps YouTube recognize us and gives us more privileges. Everybody with me? And so when you watch a sermon, don't just watch it, like it. You got to press like, thumbs up. Okay? And the more, more publicity we get, the more YouTube gives us uh, exposure. Okay, everybody got that? Yeah. The best way to explain it to you is like this. I remember the back in the days when there was newspapers. Can you imagine if we got if we got advertised New Destiny Church on the last page on the bottom? Okay? But all of a sudden the newspaper realizes, man, a lot of people are watching this article. Then they move us to the second to the last page. Amen. Then they keep moving. That's what YouTube does. That's what Facebook does. Instagram. They begin to literally promote you. Yeah. Okay. So it's a form of evangelism, folks. Getting the gospel out there. So it's really important. If you have nursery, come on, man. You can hear the sermon. All you gotta do is take some time tomorrow and listen to let God help you. Um, make sure you subscribe to the, to the to our channel. Make sure that you give them a thumbs up and share it. It's really easy to share. You can share it. You just press that little thing, put share, and it goes on a text, on an email, on a messenger. It's really easy to share. So again, do you understand the benefits of you being involved with your church? Yes? So please help your church out. Get the gospel out there. Yes, amen. Amen. Uh, I want to preach today out of a, a sermon called Running Aground. And what that word means, and I, I like using going to ground because I got used to that. I'm old school. I read my Bible uh, for decades in the King James Version because that's all there was. Nowadays, there's so many versions. There's versions that you can't even tell you read the Bible. Uh, and then they're so diluted. But uh, uh, I still know my scriptures in King James, and I kind of translate them into King, New King James. Uh, so, running aground, what that means, it means shipwreck. Everybody understand that? Yeah. It means you're going to crash. Your ship is going to crash. We are here spring forward. Amen? The time changed. Yeah. Praise God, you were all on time. <laughs> Amen? Um, you don't look jet lagged because of one hour difference. Folks, spring is a beautiful time of the year. Yes, amen. Yes. Because that means that new life is beginning to bud, is beginning to spring, is beginning to blossom. New life. The coldness and the deadness of the winter is fading away. Amen. And there's a new season that's coming in, a season of life, amen. a season of beauty. A season of blessing, a season of blossom, a season of, of, of green instead of just uh, barren trees, and, and a season of fruit instead of barrenness, and, and, and spring slowly but surely begins to just, just go throughout uh, and begins to overlap uh, and begins to just completely do away with the deadness and the coldness of winter. I believe that this is so relevant to our lives nowadays. Yes. Yeah. This is so relevant to our churches and our ministries nowadays. You understand that for this year, 2020 was a hard year. Some of you, all of you, all of the world, we went through a lot. Yeah. We dealt with things we thought we could never deal with. Mm -hmm. We went through stuff that I had only read about in the Bible. Yeah. Wearing masks, Fearing plagues, not being able to go to the store. I mean, this is stuff that, that it, this can't happen. We're Americans, but it happened. Mm -hmm. It was hard. Quarantine. At least I went to work being that I'm with the utilities company. But my wife, my son, my, my grandson, they stayed home. And I don't know how they stayed sane. 
I would come home and they were ready to, to just kill each other. Sometimes I, I hadn't even I hadn't even parked and my wife was opening the garage door. Like, you don't know what's going on. It's been a hard year, folks. And we face challenges and we're coming out victorious. We face on top of that personal issues, physical issues in our bodies. We've had to deal with sickness. We've had to deal with old age. We've had to deal with our kids rebelling, our kids making bad choices. We have to deal with our kids pretending to be in school, amen, with their AirPods, yes. <laughs> right? Learning nothing. We've had to, the, 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 we just, we just it's, 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 been a, it's been a hard year for us. But I believe that this spring season is so relevant to our lives. I believe that there has been a, a deadness and a coldness in our hearts. There's been an unfruitfulness. But as spring is ready to take over this and begin to produce life, I believe God the Holy Spirit is this, at work in us and is looking to do that in our lives, in our families, in our churches, in our ministry. Hallelujah. So if you got your Bibles, I would like to read, I'd like for you to read with me out of the book of Acts, chapter 27. This is when Paul is being uh, uh, shipped, literally in a ship, to Rome. He made an appeal. He said he would appeal to Caesar, so he's going to go to the high court. And on the journey, the Bible says uh, it, it all went south. Yeah. Verse 20, verse 18, the Bible says uh, he'd be declaring the horrible situation. They were they were exceedingly tempest tossed. That means the, the winds and the waves were throwing the ship all over the place. Yeah. The next day they lightened the ship. It was so bad that they started throwing everything out of the ship. Their cargo, their food, they're just throwing their clothes out. On the third day, we threw the ship's tackle overboard uh, with our own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days. You know why it says many days? Because they lost track of time. Wow. How long have we been in the storm? Yeah. And no small tempest beat on us. All hope that we would be saved was finally given up. Wow. But after long abstinence from food, that means, you know, that these people, they were so tired, they were so sick by being tossed back and forth, they couldn't even eat. After they, they just stopped eating. Yeah. Paul stood in the middle of them and said, Man, you should have listened to me. Of course, he has to throw that in, right? <laughs> I told you so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on. The man, you should have listened to me, not sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. Now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you. That's, that's, that's a blessing. Right, come on. Only the ship is going to be lost. For there stood before me this night an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Don't be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. In other words, God said, Paul, because you've been praying for this whole ship and the people, I'm not going to allow none of them to die. Amen. I'm granting them to you. Therefore, he said, Man, I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. However, verse 26, we must run aground on a certain island. Wow. After all that excitement, reality hits. You're going to be shipwrecked. Hey guys, don't, don't get too crazy. That look, we're coming out of this uh, pandemic. We're coming out of this cold winter. We're, we're, spring is here. Life is beginning to blossom. Hope uh, is beginning to, to, to become a reality. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Good things are happening. However, we're going to be shipwrecked. What? What do you mean? Serving God and being a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ does not excuse and absolve us or exempt us from life being life. Yes. Things are going to happen even in the midst of salvation and the promises of God becoming a reality in our lives. Uh, we must be shipwrecked at times. Stuff will happen. Now, I want to talk to you today because you and I are work. Is hard work. It's hard work. It's more than just mental work. 
It is the, the labor of the inmost soul. We don't just work with our minds, we work with our hearts. If we have issues of bitterness, it doesn't just affect our person, it affects our relationship with God. If we are struggling with a skin and we're struggling to do right, it's not just a mental torture. I don't want to be a drunk. I don't want to go back to alcoholism. It's an issue of salvation. It's an issue of losing your life, losing your family, losing your destiny in Christ. You see, our work is more than just mental work. It's heart work. Yeah. And in the midst of all that, at times we will be shipwrecked. And we have to understand that God Almighty, if we just keep our, 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 our heart and our, our look on Jesus Christ, He will get us past this. You're going to get past this. We've got past this already. God is in the throne. Lord is helping us with us. However, you know what? You're going to be shipwrecked at times. Yeah. It just happens, man. We are working with our hearts. See, if somebody's kid goes into drugs, it's horrible, and family's devastated, but it ends there. But for us, they're doing heart work and mental work. We are devastated to lose our son to sin. But then the devil comes and says, where's your God? Come he on. challenges your faith. Come on. He challenges his faithfulness. He challenges your commitment. He said, so it's like a double soul to the Christian. Yes. Yeah. See, this, this confusion of running aground can cause many Christians to become shipwrecked in their faith. Uh -huh. They become shipwrecked in their faith. You know, the Bible says, I want you to understand that, because if you follow the story there, the Bible says that they said, oh, you know what, Paul's right, thank God, oh, thank you, Paul, thank you. You brought us all home, we're so happy, let's just throw everything overboard, guys, throw the anchors, throw everything overboard, and, and some of the guys were lowering a skiff, you know those light bulbs, they're going to bail. And Paul says, hey, unless everybody stays on board, you will not survive. Right. You need to stay on board. Come on. See, friend, the thought of shipwreck can cause Christians sometimes to try to find a way out. Yeah. To try to find some way where you can just um, just maybe bypass the system, if you will. Hey, look. Maybe if I go here, maybe if I do that, maybe if I take the shortcut. But Paul says very clearly, and I don't think that's just a Bible story. That is the very God of Israel. That is the word of God speaking to us today. That when he says he will take care of you, he will take care of yes, you. God. When he promises that you will be saved, and so your household will be saved. He meant it when he said it. Yes. And he said it, will he not make it good? What door can God open that man can shut? He puts life where there is no life. God says, I can make this happen. Nevertheless, you have to stay on the promises on the ship of God. Go find them. We will weasel the way out of what I'm trying to do in your life. Come on. Come on. Satan's target is your mind. Right. And his weapon is the lies. So we should fill our minds with the things yes. of God, Amen. with the Word of God. Amen. See, inside of every Christian is the seed of God's power. Amen. You know what is, I, you know, I, I wish I would have done this. I saw a guy do it on TV. I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. He cut it up one half and started taking out the seeds. And he says, look, he says, inside the seed is life. Ooh, come yeah, on. on. Inside come the on. seed is life. Yes. Inside, do you understand that? Yes. It's just a, a seed. Yeah. But when that seed is sown, the way, when it dies, mm -hmm. that seed rots, and that death produces life. The Bible says that inside of, inside of us is the seed of God. God's word, His spirit lives in us. Yes. And when we die to self, when we die to the world,
world, when we die to the shortcuts, when we die to our own ideas and assist the Lord, <laughs> Come on. then we'll produce life. Yes, hallelujah. Jesus Come Christ on. says, hey guys, I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die. No, no, no. That's not going to happen. I don't think so. Like mercy says, no, no, no. <laughs> and Jesus said, if a seed is not planted and doesn't die, it will not produce. He says, therefore, I must be planted, buried, and die, and then I will produce life. Wow. I am the resurrection Come on. and the life. Those that believe in me, though they die, yes. they will live. Yes. Because he lives. It is when he died that he produced life. It was just like a seed. You are created in the image of God. Partakers of the very nature of God. That seed is in you. But unless we stay on the ship, unless we stay on the promises of God and not try to weasel our way out of it or justify it or find some logical way to explain it away that we can just, uh, you know, we will miss God for our lives. Right. I'm not talking about salvation. It's so easy to be saved. All you got to just call on the Lord. Right. Yeah. Come on. Come on. My God, Jesus. That was it. Come on. I'm talking about saints. The very seed of greatness. Yes, is hallelujah. God Almighty Himself dwells in you. The Spirit of the Most High Yahweh is in you. And He says, You've got to stay on that sh ship, or you're going to be shipwrecked, but it's got to stay on it. Don't lower yourself. Something you know that I don't want to do in your life. Hallelujah. Come on. How long, Pastor? How long should I wait? Because it feels like I've been waiting forever. You will wait for as long as it takes. You want an answer? You want an answer? Huh? There's an old prophet named Simeon. And there's an old prophetess named Anna and Simeon. Anna was, I think, 87 years old. So that's pretty old, huh? <laughs> Simeon was probably older than her. They weren't connected. But the Bible says that their entire life, all they did was go to the temple every day, pray, fast, and believe God for God to set Israel free. They prayed, they fasted their entire life. She was a widow. She was married for only seven years and her husband died. And she devoted her entire existence because she was burdened for Israel. And I know God can still save Israel. And she believed God. And they prayed and they prophesied and they believed. And one day they walk in with this little baby, Joseph and Mary, to dedicate him, to get him circumcised. And Simeon says, ah, ha, ha, this is the one. Thank you, God, for you have showed me that I would not die until I saw the anointed one. Hallelujah, and come on. Yes. And he begins to just yes. speak, prophesy, blessing upon him, prophesy. And Anna gets all excited. Yes, 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 yes. And, and you know, I don't know how old Simeon was, but he's like, Finally, I get to die. That's what he said. I read your Bible. That guy said, finally, I get to die. You know what I mean? I think it was worth it. Yeah. I don't know about you. I think Simeon, after that, is like, I'm glad I waited. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad I didn't take matters into my own hands. I'm glad I didn't use logic to dismiss the calling of God, the, the destiny of God. The potential that God has put in my life. I'm glad, says Anna, that even though I've been a widow for all these years, I've managed to prophesy time after time, and my eyes have seen the one that I had been waiting for Come all on. these years. Yes, Thank God. Yes. Thank you, God. Because many a time, I wanted to lower the skiff down. Mm -hmm. yes. Many a times, I'll be honest with you, What's one more Sunday that I'm going to church? 
What's one more day that I don't prophesy? What's one more uh, moment that I don't do what God calls me to do? See, sometimes the devil will come because there's a separate part of Christianity. People, oh, well, it seems like God is just leading you with a carrot on a stick. You know, he's like, oh, yes, I'm going to move. Oh, God's going to bring revival. Oh, God's going to save your family. But nothing's happening. Come on. Nothing's happening. So what do you do then? You don't lower your skill, saints. You stay in the ship. Because unless, you st unless everybody stays on the ship, they cannot be saved. And this isn't about salvation. But if you don't stay where God saved you and put you and is working in your life, if you don't continue to allow Him to produce even in the midst of a pandemic, what's going to happen is we're going to lose ourselves. Come on. We're going to lose ourselves, folks. We're going to lose ourselves. We're going to lose who we are, our purpose, the, the cutting edge of evangelism. We're in the front lines. We are not behind. We are in the front lines. We're out there in the neighborhoods and the byways and the highways, and we're preaching Jesus. We're looking for every opportunity to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are evangelists of God. We are the watchmen of the night. Preach. And we can lose ourselves yes. because there's shipwreck, shipwreck involved in our walk with God. Yes. Paul says, our, our light affliction, you know what he calls that? The man that probably went through the worst Christian life ever. I, I want you to hear this because we think, how, how many of you ever prophesied? Raise your hand if you prophesied before. Yeah. Now, did you fall into a trance? No. 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 You knew exactly what you were saying. Yes, sir. You, at any point in time, you can stop it. Isn't it true? Yes. Right? Okay. The reason I'm saying that is because God used one of the most beaten and battered men ever to say these words. The reason I bring that up about prophecy is because he could have just held it. He is that you're right. I ain't going to say that. He called Paul's affliction a light affliction. 2 Corinthians 4, 17. Our light affliction, which is only for a moment, yeah. is producing, working for us, a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. He said, you don't understand. This light affliction in your life, the shipwreck moments of your life, they are producing such a heavy weight of glory. Yes. Well, how can it do that? Listen, oh, can you put it there, sis? Okay, let's go back. Watch this. Because we, we get, sometimes we get caught up with, 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 with uh, um, chapters and verses. And for the most part, they really help. But sometimes it kind of throws off. Okay, our light affliction. Remember perspective. The guy has the right perspective. Which is only for a moment. Everything we go through is for a moment. Is working for us a far more exceeding weight. Exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Right? Yes. Go ahead, sis. And then there's a comma. It did end there. Everybody with me? Come on. That means that the next verse, even if it's a different verse, a different number, is still connected with it. Yes, so, now that that's happening, how... Can we experience that eternal weight of glory? Well, we don't look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, period. Yes. Now it is. Yes. This affliction of ours, what we go through, the shipwreck in our lives, it's, a, it's, a, it's for a moment. Right. And it only produces a greater weight of glory in our lives. How? How can it do that? Because we don't look at the things that are seen. See? Even do, though we don't do, we do mental work and heart work, but we do the spirit's work also. Right. And so we look at the things which are not seen, because yes. those things are the eternal things. Amen. We look at that individual that you witnessed to and kept them from being lost to their vice. Look at that person that you brought to church and now they're serving God. You look at that person in Peru or in Ecuador or in Colombia or in Europe that you witnessed to and by faith the word of God never went 
God and returned empty. Yeah. Yes, but the people God intended it to do. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. Accomplish that thing God intended it to accomplish. Yes, sir. Yeah. Those things are eternal, folks. Those are the ones that matter. I get up and I go to work. For the most part, I have a good attitude. But sometimes I just sit in my locker room. The other day I was sitting there. And one of the workers said, How's it going, Alex? I said, Good. One of those days, huh? One of those days. One of those days where you ask yourself, Do I really need this job? And the answer is always yes. But you know, that's not my life. Yes, sir. He's right. Yes, sir. And, you know, you know, day could be a hell day. It could be a, a huge shipwreck on a Wednesday, you know, and you're like, but then you realize that's gonna be church tonight. Yeah. Yes, sir. And just the thought that we're gonna see each other and yeah. we're gonna worship together, the thought that God's gonna be here. Sometimes I'll text Pastor Gabriel, I say, brother, you're gonna have to preach tonight. I just didn't wasn't able to finish the sermon because I work. I said, brother, you got to, don't worry, Pastor, I'm ready. Like always, he's ready. I can text Rudy. I can text Julius. Hey, preach tonight. And they're, yeah, they're ready to go. They're dying to preach, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But my point is this, folks, that no matter whether I preach or not, I come and I'm like, oh, yes. You know? That's right. Hey, how's it going? Hey, praise the Lord. Because yeah. this is what we're about. That's right. We are covenant people in Hasid with God. We can't lose track of that. Yes. We're not we're not being led by some carrot on a stick to serve God and give your tithe and, and just, just make it to heaven. No, oh, brother. We're doing things for God. We're planning out missions for this year. We're planning out things that we want to do. We're, we're going back in the streets. We got Al over here in the mix. Stuff is happening, man. The only way that this temporary affliction can, a light affliction can produce a, a great weight of glory in our lives is when we put our eyes on the eternal things and take them off the temporal things. Yeah. Lest we find ourselves lowering the skiff. The so skiff is a, a smaller life force. We call skiffs. Oh man, so come they're, on. They're lowering the skiff, pre pretending that they were lowering the anchor. The Bible wow. says, wow. and they got busted. Hey, what's up, man? Yes. You come to church. I was thinking maybe I should go to another one. Uh, no. You know what I'm saying? But why? You're hooked up. How long have you been in this church? 10 years? It doesn't take you 10 years in another church to be where you're at now. Yeah. But by then you lost 10 years and you could have been 10 years here. Yeah. Think about it. Where's the logic in that? I don't know. Just, they just prophesied to you that if you stay on the ship, God's going to bless you. God's going to move in your life. Keep tithing, keep giving, keep allowing God. This man said these words, hold everything earthly with a loose grip, but grasp eternal things with a death-like these things, you know, I don't think so, man. You know, does anybody know who Mark Harmon is? No. Jethro Leroy Gibbs. Everybody knows who Gibbs is from NCIS. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Gibbs doesn't exist. He's not real. He's a figment of Hollywood's imagination. And you really think he's real? But his name is Mark Harmon. And he walks with a limp. Oh, Gibbs, he's all that. But when I see Gibbs do sharp, oh man, I wish I was Gibbs. I wish I was Gibbs. <laughs> but he's not real. Somebody invented that character. Yeah. He's huh. not real. Hollywood is not real. These great war stories are not real. God is real. Yes, Hallelujah. God is real. What you're doing for God is real. Leading unsafe people that don't have hope to hope. Yes. That is real. Yes, sir. Come on. The family's not all that. Oh, they pretend like they're having a good old time. Just like you did when you weren't saved. <laughs> you drank. You got high. You did all these things. You're like, whoa, what a great time I had. They don't know what you did. But you had a great time. Come on. It's not real, yes. folks. That stuff's not real. Come on. Come on. Do you remember when you used to drink or you had your vice or thing? It, you, it felt so good. Even the Bible tells you sin feels good. The Bible says it's pleasurable. Pleasurable for a season. 
Then it starts to collect. Yes, come on. Then it says, hey, I don't, I don't want to drink like that no more. Then you got you got to. You don't have a choice. You're in bondage now. You are, you've been lost. You've been stuck now. See, saints, God help us, folks. If we ever just lose this, the, the view of the fact that we're going to run aground sometimes. It's reality, man. It's just life. And it affects us more because our work is more than mental work. It's hard work. Yeah. It's the labor of the inmost soul. It is just, you know, for, for, you can lose a friend in the world and you don't even care. You didn't have friends, but you call them friends. Come on. But as a Christian, you lose a church member and it just feels like there was a divorce that took place. Because it's the labor of the animal soul. And we become connected as a people more than just a, a, a church. We are a brotherhood. Genuine brotherhood. Don't get your wires crossed, Christian. Don't don't believe what you see on TV. Yeah, come on. Don't believe what you hear. You can get so consumed or, or influenced by Hollywood or by the world or by just sin that it's like, you know, oh, friend, why didn't we get saved if it was so good? Yes, that's right. Come on, because it ain't. Come on. That's right. Because the pleasures of sin are only for sin. Sure. Yep. They're only for a season. They're only for a season. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from flesh and dust. The Bible says you're sojourners. You're pilgrims. You're just kind of passing by. This isn't in your per permanent habitation. This isn't your, your, your permanent habitation. We're just passing by. You know, it's, it's really hard to fathom that my pastor went to be with the Lord. It still hasn't fully process. And I was in prayer today, this morning. And I remember thinking, man, Pastor Alvarez, he doesn't have to get up to pray no more. He doesn't have to read the Bible no more. <laughs> he had, he's with the living word. Yes. He's not out trying to pray to him. Yes. He's talking to him. Wow, come on. He's yes. eating with him. Yes. They're fellowshipping. I mean, the, 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 that's reality for us. That's the real thing. That's really what's happening. Sister Peggy, she don't feel no pain no more. Right, come on. She don't got no aches and pains with nothing. Come on. Come on. She's out there being a crazy woman out there. <laughs> she was crazy as <laughs> it. Imagine her in heaven. Come on. We're sojourners. We're pilgrims. Another translation says you are temporary residents. Right. Don't get all wrapped up. Oh, oh my God. Yes, amen. Oh my Lord. We've been taught tempest tossed back and forth for how long? This year. I know it's been hard. I know it's been rough. But come on, man. Stay in the ship. Yes. Stay in the word. Stay in the truth. Stay in the promises. Did you know that that you know we we, we, we think sometimes that that because we don't get notoriety that God doesn't know. Come on. Huh? You know the Bible says that God sees in secret? Yes, sir. Yeah. Doesn't it say that? Yes, sir. You know, I'll never forget when we used to go to El Centro, Pastor Alvarez would say, talk about the, the pastors that got launched out. He said, these men, they battle and they war an entire year. They are, they are beaten. They are tempest-tossed. They are thrown back and forth. They are their families, their kids, their finances. And then Pastor Arbus would say, in one week out of the year, they are called heroes. One week out of the year in conference. They are given their place. Oh, Pastor So-and-so from, from this church over here that we planted. Oh, Pastor Alex from Panorama City. Wow, you know. But one week a year, he says, they're heroes. Wow. Other than that, they're just temp and talk, tempest tossed Christians that refuse to give up on the ship. Come on. That will fight and be fought for. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Alvarez at the same time would say that there's power lifters. How I many you ever seen power lifters? Those guys that do, uh, there was even a program of power lifters. And, uh, and he said, these guys can 
bench, they can lift thousands of pounds. But these preachers, they lift entire cities. Hallelujah. Oh boy. Man, 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 man. That's reality, folks. You can lift a thousand pounds, and you know, just watching you, my back will hurt. Hallelujah. <laughs> but in Jesus, we are lifting entire cities, yes, entire nations, yes. entire countries. Through Jesus, we are touching lives. We are touching the eternal. Your faithfulness, your commitment, your prayers, your giving. you got to punch it through. How many times have you been shipwrecked in sin this year? How many times have you been shipwrecked mentally, spiritually, physically, financially? How many times did you think you were off the count and somehow Jesus reached down and pulled you up? Hallelujah. And your faithfulness is touching eternity. Hallelujah. There's eternity. And only, only when the books are open yeah. that are found in the archives of heaven will you really know what great things your life did for Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. How significant and how how is this, this puny little church and this little speck of dust compared to the mega churches and this this, this struggling ministry touched the world for Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. And you have been all that because you are a part and you've been factored in to all that in the name of Jesus. Yeah. That's why lately there's been this holy discomfort where you're like, man, have you asked yourself lately, I can't, I can't, I can't go on like this. Yeah. That's called the holy discomfort. Yeah. As the Holy Ghost saying, spring's coming. Yeah, Life is coming. Yeah, New things yeah. are coming. The deadness and the coldness of the winter is going to be put yes. away with. But I need you to come out of this thing. I need you to come yes. up from that skiff and get back to where you used to be. Yes. Look for me. Seek me, God says. Look for me. I will reveal myself for those that seek me diligently. They yes. will come up. find yes. I will make myself available to you. I will take you from glory to glory. I will show you things that you know not. I will reveal things to you that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, and has not even meant to enter into your understanding, thought, or imagination what I am going to do in you, yes. through you, and for you. And you can take that to the bank. Yes. Yes. This is an NCIS. Yield to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let us be that good soil today. Let us be that soil that produces. The cares of the world are those thorns that want to choke the life of God in you. But you've got to stand your ground and say, no, God, you call me. You are faithful. And I'm going to close with 2 John chapter 8. Chapter, there's only one chapter. 2 John verse 8. If you can put it, sis. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise God. It's a tricky one because there's no chapter. I know. Which one? I usually give him the scriptures, but today I didn't. So can John 1 8. Look to yourselves. This is God speaking to you. This is the Bible. Look to yourselves that we don't lose those things which we work for. You've been punching it through all this time. You don't want to lower yourself in that skip now. Now that our, the day of our salvation is at hand. But, he says, that we may receive a full reward. It's not about losing your salvation, man. It's about losing the purpose of your calling. Your potential, achieving your potential. It's about God moving in you and through you. Everybody's different. There's no one size fits all. There's only a you size. Amen. Come on. Okay? There's only a you size. Yes. I'm not telling you to be like me. I'm telling you in your way to be like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't look to yourselves that you don't lose what you've worked for. All this time you've been praying for your family. And breakthrough's about to come. Yes, you can't yes. yes come on. I take Can't that in Jesus compromise yes. now. This is not a time to compromise yes. who's unsaved loved ones. This is a time to let your life shine by making a stand for righteousness and live yes, clean for God. Do what God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Amen. If we would just yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, you know, God will help us. The Bible says, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, right? Now watch this, because today it came to me again. How many times have I read that scripture? 
This is from Isaiah. Jesus quotes it in the Gospels. And he says, And to them that were in the, you know, in the valley, the shadow of death, it has dawned. Now understand this. Please listen. Because there is a shadow of death that can follow you wherever you go. There's a shadow of hopelessness. There's a shadow of despondency. There's a shadow of, of, of depression. And why am I even doing this? There's a shadow of death that the Bible talks about. The Bible talks about Isaiah, Jesus. It says, but those who sat in the region and shadow of death, it has dawned. I came on. Hallelujah. It's springtime. It's springtime. Life is now overtaking death. Blossom, beauty amen. is coming out. Come I'll give you beauty for ashes. Yes, amen. Beauty for that morning spirit, for that the shadow of death that's just looming over you. That just right when you get a little break, a little trickle, and then it's like, oh my God, there I go. One step forward, three steps back, and God says, no. Uh -uh. I've spoken to you today. I told you, you ain't spinning your wheels. Come on. Doing good. Simeon didn't feel like he was spinning his wheels. Not when he saw Jesus, neither did Anna. Not when she saw Jesus. Paul was able to prophesy the word of God as somebody was taking it down, but he could have stopped it at any time and said, light affliction? I don't think so. He said, this ain't nothing. This ain't nothing. As a matter of fact, it's producing in me this, this great weight of glory because I ain't tripping on the stuff I see because that's just temporary. He says, I am yes, looking to those man. things that are eternal man. because it's those things that I don't see. The stuff that's going on around you as a Christian, the people that God has woke up in the middle of the night because you were going through it. He says, man. I need you to intercede for someone. Well, and he on. wanted you. You don't know how many times the enemy looked to sift you as weed, but guess oh. what? Jesus. Man. Jesus, he prayed for you. Yeah. And he kept yeah. on. Hallelujah. Yeah. He is a great intercessor for yeah. you and I. Friend, you are watching this day. Perhaps you can relate in the sense that we are all in the same ship. It's been some dark year. It's been some dark months. It's been crazy, hectic, insane. It's perplexing. Even for a Christian, confusion, man. What the heck is going on? But you know, the fact that you're watching, the fact that you're here, the fact that you 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 were moved to hear this sermon goes is called the holy discomfort. And what that means is that God is knocking in your heart. And he says, I want to take you out of that skiff. And I want to put you in a big ship where I will keep you. And I want only not only to bring you out of that skiff, I want to bring your kids. And I want to bring your parents. And I want to bring your loved ones. And I want to bring, I can, you can bring whoever you want. But I need you to come out of that skiff. How can I get out of that skiff? There's no rope. The rope is Jesus. Amen. You say, friend, Jesus died on the cross for us. He shed his blood for our sins. He paid the price on the cross for us. Not for him. Yes. He has no sin. So he was our, he received our punishment so that we could come out of that skiff and put ourselves in his care. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ in your heart, if you would like to be saved and find that salvation and that hope and that joy, all you have to do is accept Jesus in your heart through a simple, short prayer. If you would like to do this, I want you to repeat this after me. And I want you to say it with all your heart. You're going to ask Jesus to forgive you and to save you. And to come into your life and your heart. I want you to say, Jesus, Jesus forgive me of all my sin. I repent. I'm sorry. I invite you in my heart. As my personal Lord and Savior. And from this day on, I'll serve you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Friend, if you accepted Jesus in your heart, you were looking for a rope to get you out of that skiff, and you just opened your eyes and you find yourself on solid rock of Jesus Christ. 
God saved you today. All your sins are forgiven. And now he will give you the ability to bring as many people as you want into that moment of salvation. If you accepted Jesus today, we would like to invite you to please contact us. We want to help you grow in God. There's an email on our Facebook. There is a phone number on our Facebook. You can text us. You can call us. You can email us. Or whoever invited you, let them know. Say, hey, I accepted Jesus. What do I do next? Hallelujah. Christian, I want to talk to you. It's been a rough year. I know that. Can you guys put my song that has no copyright? Christian, God has spoken to you. And sometimes, man, it's been a rough year, man. Kids acting up, things happening. Man, on top of all this stuff, you see our work. It's more than mental work. It's heart work. It is the labor of our inmost soul, brother. Other people, they go through stuff and it's okay. They'll get high, they'll get drunk and forget. Not us. It affects our relationship with God. The enemy comes with his lies and his assaults. And maybe you find yourself in your perceptions a little bit foggy, a little bit obscure. Maybe, maybe your perception is, is warped. And God says, no. Don't get off that skiff. Don't get down that skiff. How does it make sense when you have a huge ship that's being tossed back and forth to get into a little boat? The little boat of your own boat, of your own ideas, of your own conclusions. Stay on the ship, man. Yeah, it will run aground sometimes, but if you stay in the ship, you'll make it. You'll make it. You'll be all right. And this day, they that sat in the region and the shadow of death, it has dawned. It's dawned on you. That, that cloud was hovering over you. Discouragement, deception, just confusion, just wanting to just, man, what am I doing here? And God has spoken to you. And there was a holy discomfort these last couple of weeks saying, I can't do this. I can't be like this. That's God saying, I'm, spring is coming. Spring is here. Times of refreshing is here. The desert shall bloom. The desert shall rejoice at the presence of the Lord. God has touched you already. And I want to encourage you to come to this altar and seal it before Him. You are not spinning your wheels. God is with you and you are in the right place. What better place to serve than in that place where prodded Providence has taken us. Let's all stand right now. Let's all stand. Come and find a place to pray at the shelter. Talk to God. If you're you're watching online, you know what? Kneel before God. Sit down. Do whatever you need to do. And allow God the Holy Spirit to breathe on you. Times of refreshing are here. Spring is here. Life is here. The coldness and the barrenness and the fruitlessness of our past is gone. New life has come.
You've been feeling that holy discomfort and you don't even know, man, I wish I could just fix it. And God he said, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to yeah. prophesy to it. Yeah. And speak life. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get you back into good standing and relationship with that person. Uh, whether it's a family member or a co-worker or a friend. Uh, God says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mend those broken hearts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mend that relationship. Friend, I speak it upon you and let it overflow to the lost and to our friends and loved ones. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. amen. And amen. God bless you, folks. You're dismissed. Have a blessed day. Let's get some people saved. Amen.